I'll, I'll tell a, a, just a little story, which is sort of related. I was fortunate to, to supervise an intern one year in my parish life, and uh, I don't I don't talk about about myself a lot in the pulpit, but you know I, I would talk about my own doubts, my own struggles, you know, my life in the faith, you know that you know just sort of sharing as one Christian to a bunch of others. Uh, you know, to say this is the real life we live in, this is the real, you know, our real experience is like this, and this is how God responds. And the intern uh, sat down with me at one of our supervisory sessions, and she said, um, I don't feel comfortable talking about my faith struggles. I don't feel comfortable the way you do talking about my own life and faith. Uh, what am I supposed to do? How am I? And I said, well, I think then you start with confessing that you're uncomfortable. You don't have to tell us about your faith struggles. Just tell us that you're uncomfortable talking about them. I mean, so tell the truth about yourself. So I, when, when, when I have writer's block, <laughs> preacher's block, uh, I think I have to just acknowledge that and say, what is, what's the meaning of that? I mean, if, if my goal is to come up with a, a, a sellable sermon in spite of my writer's block, Everyone, so I'll pull one from three years ago or six years ago or pull one off the internet or find a, something that, you know, David Lose has written or something. Um, that, maybe that's better than nothing, uh, but everyone in the place is going to know at some level that I'm not engaged in this work, that this is not my voice, this is not me. Better to plow your way through the writer's block, acknowledge it openly, say, I read this, I, you know, I worked with this text. And I don't want preachers to complain about how hard their life is, so I, I don't, you know, I wouldn't put this in the sermon. But, but some in some way to communicate that, you know, I'm a little dry. And where is God in dry times? And where is God in when when our voices stopped? And, and again, you know, I'd cross my fingers and say a prayer and knock wood or whatever I would do to say that the lectionary. If you're, if you're honest about your writer's block or your preacher's block or the fact that your voice, I, nine times out of ten, the lectionary is going to give you something that's going to address that and allow you to say, even when we are stopped, somehow even our, our vulnerability or our weakness can be used by God to proclaim the word. And the lectionary is going to open that up. The Bible will open that up. I mean, maybe it won't, but <laughs> that's a, my, my statement of faith is that if you're honest about where you're at and faithful to the God who may leave you there for a while, I mean, trying to stay trusting in the God who will leave you there, that there will be a way for you to speak about your, even your being stopped. Um, so that's how I would respond. I mean, it's agonizing. I mean, but, but it's agonizing for parents. I mean, what do you do when you look at this lump of humanity that you've brought into the world and you just have no love for it at all today, him or her, but diapers got to be changed, things got to be, you find a way to fold your resistance into what you, you're called to do. I mean, but you don't deny it. Well, some do, but you don't deny it. You work your way through it. The, the answer is through that darkness, not around it.